how to automate web forms. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get started quickly if you're a beginner, either by using a snippet, a template, or a brand new quick builder. More about that in a second. Then I'm gonna take you through making your very own bot from scratch and show you a few of the tricks and a few of the methods that I would recommend to more experienced builders. Okay, so without further ado, let's start from a snippet and show you how to get a bot set up to start automating your data entry or your web forms. So I'm just gonna tab onto this job form page here because I found this little comment section that I may want to fill in with a bot, but I'm not gonna use for this demo purposes. I'm gonna make a, a very simple bot with a couple of steps to add some data into this comment box. But you can use this tutorial to help make a bot for larger web forms or smaller forms such as search fields or comment fields like this. So first thing I'm gonna do is when I've opened up Axiom, you'll probably be on the dashboard, something like I am, probably with a few less axioms. And I'm gonna click new automation. I'm gonna add my first step. And remember, I'm gonna select a snippet to get started here. And I can see my beginner snippets when I start from scratch like I've just done. And I'm gonna pick this one, fill in the form. What a snippet does is basically add a predefined set of steps into my automation to give me a little bit of a boost, a bit of a head start, and help inform the beginner of the kind of steps you'll need to automate um, web form entry. So first up, you'll see it added a go-to page step and Axiom just grab the URL for me. That's pretty cool. I'm just circling the enter URL field there. So now the bot knows to open up the web form page. Next up, it added an enter text step. And this is our go-to step when automating forms because obviously most forms are inherently input fields. So I'm gonna be entering a lot of text into forms. So to get an enter text step up, set, enter text step set up, I just need to do two things. I need to first select the field we want to enter some data into, and I've just pressed select, then I click, highlight it in orange, that's the field selected, and I press complete. Next up, I just need to input the text I want to enter. And generally when I'm creating an automation, what I want to do is first do a quick test to see if Axiom and the web form are compatible. So I type in some text, I'm just gonna use my own name. And so I've got my enter text step set up. Next, I've got a click element step, and that does exactly what it says. Obviously it's gonna click on the button. So with web forms, I probably want to select the submit button, or if it's called send comments, so I select that button. And I've very quickly got the snippet set up. So. I could click run and test it. I'm not going to show you that because we won't take you through all of that now. And I can test in the cloud or on the desktop. But generally, I prefer testing on the desktop because I can see what happens in the run. I can use a wait step to pause it and then inspect the fields if I need to. Okay, so that's how to get started with the snippet. Now, obviously, you may have more fields than just, just the one enter text step. So... If you go between the steps, you can add in additional steps to start filling out your automation and customizing it to what you want to do. So I can just add enter text steps here. And if I know I want to add eight, I can do this. Enter the times, enter the little star, and there we go. And I've added all the enter text steps I needed. So you use the step finder to flesh out the snippet the snippet is a starting point. Okay, let's show you the next method for getting started for beginners, and that's using a template. Now you can find the templates on our website. I'll show you how to find them in the automation here. Start from a template. And here we want to go to data entry. Now, you can automate data entry from Zapier. You can do it from a Google Sheet. We have two templates to do that. So I'll start with the Zapier example. I'm going to skip the setup that Axiom shows you and just crack on. Now you'll see, again, we've got the steps pre-populated there for you. 
This time we have a loop step, so it's a little bit different, so it can loop through any data sets you send from the app. We recommend using the test data as we've got it set up here. To, so that means you can run your automation, especially if you're using the Zapier one. We always recommend that um, you build the form interactions with test data first before you build the Zapier um, the zap that you want to send because you can just toggle it onto the live zap. It's just quicker and the better way to build. And then to use the template, you just go through what we've done before, adding your, your URL, selecting your enter text steps, clicking on the submit button, clicking run, changing anything you need to change and just iterate until you've got your working bot. And of course you can fully customize this template too. Now, the final way I want to show you for getting started if you're a complete beginner, but I'm gonna show you the, the, the another method after this as well for, for more advanced users is um, starting from blank, that method, but more about that in a second. But the final way, and probably the, the coolest new feature that we've got is using our new automation. You'll see up here, or may have noticed already, we've got our quick builder. And it says, give it a go. So exactly what I'm going to do. And the Quick Build presents you with the choice of type of bot you want to build. And in this case, we're doing enter data into a web form. So I'm going to click there. Then ask me whether I want to do a read data from Google Sheet, whether I want to scrape from another website, send a webhook, etc. I choose the method I want. So in this case, we're going to scrape and then add data. Do we have an existing list of URLs? No. We only want to scrape from a single page. And basically, you can see here on the right, we've got a bot preview. And it's going to add some steps that we'd need to create this automation. It will take me through them one by one, but I'm just going to press skip in this case. And again, we'll see we use the get data. We've got a get data step. Well, we haven't seen that before. Get data step from a URL. So you put the URL where you want to scrape some data from. This is a slightly different variation on a data entry bot. We can then load the, inside this loop, we can load the page that we want to um, get the web form interaction going with. And then we've got some enter text step here. You probably want to add a click element button to click on the submit button. And we probably want to add some enter text steps to start fleshing that out. And just every time you add a couple of steps, I'd recommend you click, click run, test as you go, get everything working, and then you're good, good to schedule the bot. Cool, so that's the best ways to get started if you're a beginner. Now, let me take you through um, starting from blank. So let's create a a bot from scratch that automates a web form. Now, the first thing I'm going to say, it might seem counterintuitive, do not start with your data source. The first step you should add should be the go-to page. Now, we can add data to pass into our bot at any stage. We can add the Zapier step in, we can add our read data step, and then we can just pass data between the steps. That's really easy. What we want to do is just scaffold and test our bot that enters data into inputs and works with select lists. We want to make sure all of that works before we commit to making a zap or getting a Google Sheet ready. So this is how I recommend doing it. Add a go-to page step. It grabs the URL of the web form you're on. So now we've got the bot, it's going to load the um, correct page. Now let's add some steps in that we want to test out. We won't do all of them, so what we're going to do is the first four enter text steps. So we need four enter text steps. Um, we're going to do the select list, United Kingdom, and probably tick on one of these tick boxes. And that's what I recommend doing. Automate part of the form, go on to the next part. Now, I'm just going to open up Axiom again, and I'm going to open up the step finder. And I think I said four enter text steps. So let's do enter text. I'm going to use the little asterisks here. I'm going to do times four, essentially, and click on that. Press return. It's going to add the four enter text steps. So now I can just set them up. 
I select the field and I'm going to use our no code select tool first and check if that works. It should do. If not, I can use custom classes. I can work that out. It's pretty easy. Complete. Voila. So you can see how quickly I'm scaffolding out my prototype here. Email. Complete. Add Alex. Add Axiom. AI. Then what's the next? So that's three done. Shipping address. I'm just going to put three road. Okay, so I've got my first four steps set up. Now, what I like to do is when I'm prototyping scaffolding, so to speak, I just want to sort of run some tests. So we can see my form automation is working. So now I've proved Axiom can pretty much automate this form. So now I can go on and flesh out and test some of the other parts. So let me just tab back to here. Now, I haven't tried a select list yet, and we've got a step to do that. We have a range of steps to work with the different elements or browser actions that we want to do. Select list. We choose the select list. We've done that, and I want to select um, just complete Uganda. Just for an example, because it was already on the United Kingdom. And then I'm going to try ticking one of these boxes, which to do a checkbox, I'm going to use a click element. It does seem to select it, so I think that's done. And let's do another test. Again, I'm just going to run it in the cloud this time. But I generally do recommend the desktop. It's just that I'm using a dev version of Axiom and my desktop is on the current version of Axiom. Uganda, and it took the box, so that's awesome. So I know Axiom is working really well on this form. I'm just going to stop that. Now, what I can start to do here is, well, what I'll do is just at this point, complete my automation or complete the web form and add all the other steps. I'm not gonna do that for this video. Of course, you add a click element to click the submit button. Let me just check over here. You can do your tick boxes, etc., and go on. Now, um, a couple of other techniques, just to mention that to keep your automations um, neatly um, arranged, especially if you're doing long forms, it doesn't matter at all on short forms, excuse me, is that I like to um, group my um, steps. I use um, the loop steps just to group them. I'm not going to trigger the loop, the loop will be off, but it means I can just make nice bundles. I can just group those steps and call it first page of form and then I could add another loop step add my sub steps in there and that will be when I go on to automate the second page of a long form so that allows me to arrange my automation very neatly when we, when we're executing automation of large forms now we do also have some logic steps I should quickly touch upon. So if you're automating a form, obviously a lot of them can be um, dynamic, they're relying on data coming back, form states can vary. We do um, have a try catch step. This step, base, this step will basically execute a set of sub steps. So for example, you may want to make a different selection and then if an error or something comes back, you can execute a different set of sub steps. Otherwise, the bot will just continue on. So that can be a useful step when automating the forms. Another step I like to use as well, or a combination of steps, is the get data step. Get data from the current page because we've already loaded the page up at the start. And sometimes I want to check, let's say I wanted to check um, 
if the product quality five option was there, I could scrape the text and then I could use an if else condition. And I can pass that data to check. So here's the scrape product quality five. And when condition, if it matches the number, word five in this case, because it is a word or it's a letter, or I can do number. If you're doing numbers, you can also put our own JS in there. If it matches, then I want to run this condition if true. So then I want to execute these steps if that is found. And so then I could add a button to click. Click on the option that I want and execute a different set of steps with the else if that option isn't found. So there's a couple of extra methods um, and ways to use logic to help build web form automation so a little bit more complicated. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and this helps you get started automating web forms. Thank you.